Hi, my name is Enoch Hernandez and I'm an application engineer here at Hawker System. Today we're going to be talking about how we get started in sheet metal. I'm going to create a metal cover for a box. Now I could use a traditional way of doing this right where I use a boss extrude and then a cut extrude, right? To get that constant thickness, but there's another way to do that. I could use what's called sheet metal and sheet metal is going to guarantee me that I have constant thickness all around. Now instead of going to the features tab, what I have to do is I have to right click on one of the command manager tabs and click on sheet metal. So instead of going to boss extrude, I'm not going to go to the sheet metal tab and click on base flange tab. What this is going to do is that it will create a base and also have parameters that are going to carry over to other sheet metal features. Just like a boss extrude, I can change the end condition to mid plane give a depth of 12 inches right a foot. I could manually change the thickness or the bend radius but what I'll use is the sheet metal gauges. Now either I can create my own tables right that can be about bend allowances, K factors, or hybrid tables. I'm going to use the default sample table steel and English units. Once I do that I can change the gauges. Now the rule is is that the smaller the number the thicker the material. The bigger the number, the thinner the material will be, right? So I'll use 14 gauge. Another thing to take note is we can reverse direction, but be aware because this will change the width's overall length. So if I change it and reverse the direction, the overall length has changed there. It's still 12 inside the sketch, but since that thickness, it will change it's being added to it. So I can reverse it. I'm going to leave it as it is. What I'll do next now is I can change the bend allowance, right? I'm using it as a K factor. I can use something from the bend table or use bend deduction to name a few. And the auto relief can be changed to rectangular, tier, or O brown. I'll leave it rectangular for now and give it a ratio of 0 0.5. Now the base has been created and another one of the positive things that this does for me is that it creates a cut list. If I open up the cut list folder, what it is is that it actually stores information for me. So I'm just going to make my window a little bigger. What this does is that I can look here and see that what the box length is. It's currently telling me what it is here, the width, the thickness, the area. It's all listed here. If I had a material, it would also tell me what it is. So again, if I were to open this part and go to my cut list, I could look at all this information. Something that I can't do with a boss extrude. If I want to change the parameters for the sheet metal, I can right click on it and this would be the overall parameters of everything that's used inside sheet metal. I would go directly to the folder like I just did. I can change it to a different table, change the gauge, change the auto relief to O brown or tier if I wanted to. If I were to go open up the folder and go directly to sheet metal, I would actually override for that particular base, but the other parameters in the folder would still carry over to other sheet metal features. Or I can just right click on the base flange and just like a boss extrude, I can change the depth or I can change the end condition. Now what I want to do is I want to add an edge flange, so I go to my sheet metal tab and just click on edge flange. I don't need to create a sketch for it. I can just click on the edge that I want and I can pull it about this height. I can edit it so I can move it up or down like that. I'm just going to add a height now of two inches and I can always go back and actually change the position of that flange. So currently I'm at material outside, I can change it to material inside, or I can do a bend outside, see how it's coming out like that, or bend it on the sh virtual sharp. I'm just going to leave it with material outside for now and click OK. Another type of edge that I can bring in is a miter flange. Now to do that I'm going to create a sketch on this face here. So I'll just put down my line 
at an angle of course and now I can just add my dimensions right we always want to have a fully defined sketch this will be 140 the degrees that length there will be an inch and the height will also be at half an inch now all I do is I go to sheet metal click on miter flange now to get it to this shape it would have been a little bit more difficult to use the edge flange here see how it comes out I can also adjust the flange position to material inside and see how it moves in I can change it to material outside or do it from the bend outside like this for now I'm gonna leave it at material outside I can also change the gap now why would you say there's a gap there well if I click here where it says to propagate it's gonna make that flange go all the way around that edge and now I can further adjust that gap that's right there. So now my cover is ready to go for my box here. And we saw how easy it is to create an edge flange the way we created the base flange, right? And also how we created that miter flange there. Using sheet metal helped me get a lot of information right by my cut list. And again, we can see how constant thickness is all around. You don't have to just use it for metal. You can use it for cardboard if you're making a box. And with that said, if you have any other tips and tricks on getting started with sheet metal, let us know in the comment section. Go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. And thank you again.